Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. It is uh, truly a blessing to be able to spend time with you as we dive deep into God's Word. Now, we've uh, we've been covering a devotional series of the characteristics of a committed Christian, and this is uh, part four. So let's review what we've gone over so far. So a committed Christian loves God. A committed Christian stands on God's Word, and a committed Christian uh, strives or advocates for Christian unity. Uh, especially during these times, as we talked about last time when, with uh, Christian unity, you know, it's a time where there's so much divisiveness uh, uh, going on. And, and especially now that we have this uptick of uh, coronavirus in, in Houston and Harris County and Texas and in the United States and, and worldwide, it's very important at this time that we really strive for unity. You know, um, the Bible talks about how we all have Christian uh, liberties and we're all, you know, to do things because we're under grace and, uh, you know, we have um, certain Christian liberties to do things. But just because we have the liberty to do those things doesn't mean that it's always right to do those things, especially if it causes a younger brother or sister to stumble. Um, and, and, you know, it could be something as, you know, eating pork, you know, the dietary laws that, that, you know, uh, the old Testament talks about that Jesus says, you know, you're no longer under those dietary laws. Uh, but if it causes somebody to stumble, then we shouldn't do that because we should strive for, for unity. And, and so, you know, especially with this time, uh, this period of time where we have this uptick in coronavirus, I just want to encourage you. I encourage everyone when, when you come to church, when you come to Believers Fellowship, we encourage you as we always have encouraged you, uh, just to, to wear your mask as you come in, uh, and until you sit down in, in, in the sanctuary, both at Magnolia and Spring. Uh, you know, our, our, uh, greeters and, uh, ushers, of course, will, will continue to wear their masks as they greet you. And they uh, open the door for you to come into open the doors for you to come into the church and the sanctuary. But I want to encourage you um, to just, you know, be sensitive to others uh, and, and wear your mask. And, and again, it's not a requirement. It's not a mandate. But it, uh, I, I just want to encourage you to wear your mask as you come into the church until you find your seat. And then as you exit the uh, exit, the church as well. It just we don't want to uh, cause somebody to stumble or cause somebody to, you know, second guess their choice on coming to church. Uh, we want to be welcoming to all people at all times. I mean, we got we got to be ready in season and out of season. And so I just uh, want you to pray about that. And again, we encourage you to wear your mask as you come into the church. And then as you leave the church, when you're seated, when you're worshiping, you know, and, and hearing God's word from the pulpit, you know, of course, you know, you, you've, you have every right to, to take your mask off. And, and so, but I just want, you know, just real quick, if we could do that, that would be great. I would greatly appreciate it as I'm sure the other pastors as well would, would as well. Um, today we're going to talk about how a committed Christian also has an attitude of faith. Uh, and before we go any for, further, let's, let's pray. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father, Father, and I just, Father, I just pray for our, our country, Father. I pray for our leaders, Father. Father, you raise leaders up and you take leaders down, Father, Father. And so we pray for your will, Father. Father, I just thank you that you're still on the throne, Father. That's just the reassurance that, that I need, Father, that, that you are in control, Father, and your will be done, Father. And I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I pray that during this time, Father, we're able just to glean uh, uh, a message, Father, of, of what it means to walk by faith, what it means to have faith in you, Father. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. And so, um, you know, the, again, uh, today's topic or focus is going to be a committed Christian also has an attitude of faith. Now, I've heard uh, pe many people say, you know, that, that God loves us where we are. And, and that's true. God does love us where we are, but you know, it, 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 he does love us, but it's not his love that saves us. You know, Ephesians 2, 8 tells us that for by grace, you have been saved through faith and not, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. So, so how do we grow closer to God by faith? Because faith, it, you know, it's grace that saves us by faith. And so how do we grow closer to God by faith? How do we, how do we walk with him and walk in him? It's by faith. 
Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So what does that look like, right? What, what, how does, what is, what does that feel? What do you know? How do you, how do you know if you're walking by faith? Well, we must have the courage and strength to follow Christ. We cling on to God's word. The, the, you have to have the strength to follow his plan, the courage to stand with Jesus, regardless of the obstacles that life puts in front of us. You know, if you look at John 7, uh, thir verses 37 and 39, Jesus describes how the Holy Spirit's work, the Holy Spirit works in our lives as being like rivers of living water. Now, the Holy Spirit will work in our lives to expand his influence in us. Often, the way he works in our lives is to call us to take steps of faith. You know, faith is defined in Hebrews 11.1 1 is now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So there are two ways the Holy Spirit calls us to take steps of faith. It could be an occasion uh, where we are called to meet a challenge or it could be an occasion where we're called to endure a trial. God uses these occasions to call us to a place where we must trust in him and in him alone. If we are to meet that challenge or to endure that trial, we have to be committed. We have to be committed to the to have faith in Christ. God will grow our faith by putting us in those circumstances where we are in over our heads. George Mueller uh, said this about, uh, you know, he said, the believer should not shrink from situations, positions, or circumstances in which his faith may be tried. So we shouldn't shy away from situations where our faith is tested. But he should cheerfully embrace them as opportunities to see the hand of God stretched out in help and deliverance. Thus, his faith will be strengthened. God will work in our lives through circumstances to stretch and shape our faith. We must have an attitude of faith in God, regardless of what may come our way or, or what we may face in life. We, sh we don't need to shy away or put our, head, put our heads in the sand. We need to go forward because we go forward knowing that we have faith in Christ and that God will walk, will be with us and he'll walk with us through those trials. Sometimes uh, we have just, this, you know, sometimes we just got to say, let it rain so that he can rain in our lives. Joshua was called to, by God to meet a challenge. You know, let, let's get the backstory on that. So Moses is dead. God charges Joshua to lead the people into the promised land. We learn from some valuable lessons about faith from what the Lord tells Joshua. So Joshua 1, 9, it says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When it comes to faith, there are three things that I want to look at. The first one being that the center of our faith, the center of our faith is God. If we go back to Numbers, Numbers 23, 19, and this is the New, uh, New Living Translation, it says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Now, you like me, I'm sure, we've committed to someone or something to later change our mind. It could be, you know, a scheduling conflict, or it could be we just don't want to do it anymore. We said it, we said yes, but we really didn't mean yes. You know, unlike us, God never finds himself in an uncomfortable situation of having made a promise he no longer wants to keep or that he's not able to keep. You see, God is a promise keeper. The second point is that the, what are the characteristics of faith? What we see from Joshua is, is that he had steadfast, you know, we're, he is called to have steadfast obedience. It says, be strong. When we have an attitude of faith, it is revealed by our faithfulness. Walking by faith requires a strong determination to follow God's plan, regardless of what life throws your way. We got to have a, we got to have, we got to be courageous. We got to have, you know, an, an, a, 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 an act, we got to be an action of being courageous. And so walking by faith means that we have courage to stand up for those who are hurt and are broken. Now through our lives, that might be us. And so we got to stand for those that can't stand for themselves because someday, sometime, somewhere, somebody might be standing for you. Let's look at Esther and how she risked the death penalty, death penalty to save the Jews. Think about Noah. He was building an ark for a flood when it had never rained on earth before. Think about Abraham clinging, clinging to the promise that he would be the father of many nations, even though he was childless and he was 100 years old. Think about Joshua marching around the walls of Jericho 
as God told him to, and wondering, what good is this going to do? We must have the courage to get out of our comfort zone. We got to have faith that God will be there and meet us wherever he, he calls us to be. We got to have a confident outlook. It says, do not be terrified. We got to have the, you know, faith is the refusal to panic. The reason for this is that fear and faith are opposites. To be fearful is to be faithless. To be faithful is to be fearless. We must be willing to let God out of the neat little box that we've put him in and let him take control of our, our take control over our lives. We cannot be discouraged. You know, there was a missionary, his name was Adoniram Johnson, and, and in, 18, in the 1800s, him and his wife became the first missionaries to, to the country of Burma. And, you know, there were no Christians at the time. There, there weren't, you know, there were no Christian missionaries or Christian converts there. Uh, and so when they went there, it was tough. Within the first year, you know, uh, their, their, their first, first baby was born. Eight months later, that baby died and, and was buried under a mangrove tree. You know, opposition came at him. He was in prison for 21 years for being a spy. But through, uh, you know, he, he was condemned to die. And, and But, you know, through prayer, he was relieved at, released and his life was spared. It was six years before he had the first convert. What was his, what was his perspective throughout all of this? And then when he finally had that first convert, he said, the future is as bright as the promises of God. See, faith is characterized by steadfast obedience. It's characterized by courageous action, confident, uh, having a confident outlook and a po and positive perspective, knowing that God is going to be there. The third point I want to look at is when we trust God to enable us to, e you know, when we trust God we to enable us to either meet a challenge or to endure a trial, God will show up. On, on June 27th, 1819, Judson baptized his first Burman believer. And he wrote in his journal, Oh, may it prove to be the beginning of a series of baptisms in the Burman Empire, which shall continue in uninterrupted success to the end of the age. You know, these converts were slowly added. You know, the second, the third, six, and, and, and then so on and so forth. At the age of 62, Judson died. He had spent 38 years in Burma, and although he had waited six years for his first convert, the government did a, a, a census, and he record, they recorded 200,000 200, Christian converts in the country of Burma. One in every 58 Burmese was a, was a Christian. Why was Judson able to endure the trials he faced and rise to the challenge uh, that he did? is because he was a man of faith. He trusted God to, point, to the point where he obeyed God's call. Whether it was to meet a challenge or to endure in trial, he knew that God would be there. And he had faith that God was with him. You know, if we go back, if we look at Matthew, uh, Jesus' disciples faced a challenge where, where they weren't, weren't able to accomplish this, this challenge. And they asked Jesus why they couldn't do what needed to be done. And in Matthew 17, Jesus replied to them and he said, because of the littleness of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say move to this mountain, move from there, here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. So they didn't have the faith. God has called us to have faith in him. God has played, what, you know, what has God placed before you today? Whether it is a call to meet a challenge or to endure a trial, trust him, obey him, and watch him show up. He has promised that he will be with you every single step, walking with you, carrying you, supporting you. He promises that he is still in control. Even when life seems to be spiraling out of control, put your faith in God. Faith is having confidence and trust in God. I don't know where you are in your journey uh, of walking by faith, but I encourage you. Let God take your life, your pain, your loss, and use it for his glory. Ask him to do it, to do an amazing work in you so that he can do an amazing work through you. I promise you, it is the decision that you will never regret. 
as we go through life and, and, and our current reality right now, now more than ever, we need to have faith in Christ because of all the things that are coming at us, all the things that we hear in, in, in the media and so, and, you know, with our conversations at, at, you know, with our colleagues at work, our friends in the neighborhood, our family, you know, social media, all these things are being bumped, are just bombarding us. Now more than ever, we need to have faith in Christ and faith in God because that's really where our faith should lie. Faith should not lie in man. Faith should not lie in things or in government or jobs or, or our finances. Our faith should all be placed on God. God is the only thing that will see us through these things, nothing else. This is a time and a call to get back to our to, to what and who we should be following, and that's Jesus Christ. I pray that if you don't know Christ, that that you come to a place and that somebody that God puts somebody in your path to where they can share the gospel with you and see that this life is temporal. All these things are temporal, but one day you're you're gonna be faced face to face with face to face with God. And if you don't have faith in Christ, if you never accepted him as your Lord and Savior then you will spend eternity in hell because you did not have faith in God. I pray that that's not you. If that is you, I urge you, contact the church. Contact somebody uh, who, who who knows Christ, who can, who can counsel you. I pray for you and I pray for those that are struggling right now. We're all struggling with different things, but know that, that Christ is with you. Amen? Well, amen. Let's pray. Father God. Just thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy, Father. I thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, Father. I thank you for the trials that you put us through, Father, to strengthen our faith, Father, so that we, Father, can be strengthened, Father, and be courageous uh, through you, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A couple of closing, uh, just a couple of announcements here at the Spring Campus. Don't forget, we are having our Hanging of the Greens this Saturday uh, from 9 to 11. Uh, you don't need to contact the church to sign up. Just show up at 9 o'clock on Saturday. And uh, the more people that show up, uh, the less time it'll take. We have two hours blocked off. But again, the more people show up, it, it might not take that long. So uh, 9 to 11 this Saturday will be Hanging of the Greens at the Spring Campus. You don't want to miss church this Sunday. Of course, we have two services, 9 o'clock at the Magnolia Campus. Um, 1045 at the spring campus. Again, uh, we do recommend, uh, that you, uh, wear your mask coming in to the church. And as you exit the church while you're seated, you can definitely take your mask off, but we do encourage you to do that. And again, it's just about unity in the body. Uh, and if it makes somebody feel more comfortable, we want to do that. Uh, because again, although we do have Christian liberties uh, to cause somebody to stumble, uh, that's not what our liberties are for. Our liberties are to glorify God. Amen. Amen. And, and so with that being said, that's all I have. So good luck. Our God bless. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. All right.